Hi, I'm Tony Robbins. Welcome to The Body You Deserve. We're shooting this program outside here just to remind you of the kind of vitality and energy you deserve to have. The kind of energy that you could feel if you'd just get rid of not only the excess weight so you'd look better, but so that you'd feel the energy you deserve in your body as well. And I want you to know that I'm committing this program to help you to produce lasting results. That in this program, what we want to do is not just inspire you to do more, not inspire you to just lose weight, but to give you strategies that are proven and that will work to help you to accomplish the long-term change that you desire and you deserve. I want to start out first by thanking you and telling you how much I respect you because I've been through this myself. I weighed 38 pounds more than I do now almost eight years ago and I made those permanent changes that I'm promising you and after I tried what I thought was everything else. In fact, I want to warn you. If you're saying to yourself, I've tried everything, stop that phrase right now because it's not true. You've not gone through the strategies that we're going to show you on not only how to create change, but how to condition those changes so that they truly last. You know, one of the biggest challenges that people have in dealing with any kind of addiction or any kind of behavior that they've been trying to change for some time and not really been successful at is they often get caught up in something we call learned helplessness. Learned helplessness is where you get to the point where you think a problem is permanent. Where you try to tell yourself that you need to change, that you want to change, but in your gut you don't really believe that you can. Or when you start thinking a problem is pervasive, like because you haven't handled your body, your whole life is screwed up, for example. Most people are really successful in many areas of their life, either in their influence of their children or in their business, but they have one area they haven't mastered, and usually it has to do with their body, or maybe smoking, or maybe some other aspect of life itself. But I'm here to tell you that those changes can occur, but you first have to make three simple changes. Number one, you're going to have to raise your standards. Otherwise, the change will be temporary. What do I mean? When I say raise your standards, I mean develop a new sense of what you must have in your life. What you're willing to settle for will have to change physically, emotionally, mentally. How are you going to feel about yourself? It doesn't happen just by saying, well, I want to change. You have to, in your mind, identify yourself as a different kind of person than the way you've behaved in the past. Secondly, you're going to have to change some of your belief systems. Because if you set these real high standards for yourself, say, this is what my body's going to be like, this is how I'm going to live, this is how I'm going to eat, this is the kind of energy I'm going to have, but inside your head, you really don't believe it can happen, it's already over. You won't achieve what you want. You can't have high standards and not believe, because if you don't have that sense of certainty, you and I both know the first time you get tempted, the first time you run into a challenge, you'll give up. And then thirdly, if you've got the standards and you've got the beliefs, then you've got to have the right strategy. You can't just want to change. You've got to know how to. Let's say you're in an airplane, and all of a sudden a pilot grabs his chest and has a massive heart attack. You may want to fly that plane right now, but you've got to have more than want. You've got to know how or you're still going to crash. We're going to show you proven strategies that have worked for tens of thousands of people to create that lasting change that we've been talking about. The big question, though, is why don't people normally change and make it last? Well, I think one of the reasons that people don't successfully change is, number one, the things we talked about. They never really raised their standards. They really didn't change their beliefs. They didn't have the right strategy. But most importantly, they didn't know how. I'd like to share with you six master steps in this program that will help you to create that lasting change. And we're going to help you go through those six steps through two phases. Phase one, we're going to prepare you for the change. Too often people try to change something instantly and they're not mentally and emotionally prepared for it. And then secondly, the actual process of change. What's it going to look like? Six primary steps. Step number one, we're going to help you to identify what do you really want. Now, as simplistic as that sounds, most people don't have a clue what they want. Most people want to ask them, what do you really want? What do you want to change? What do you want to make better in your life? They usually tell me what they don't want. They talk about, well, I don't want to have all this excess weight. I don't want to look this way anymore. I don't want to have to always be on a diet. Your brain will go after whatever you focus on. I know when I was in racing school years ago, one of the first things they taught me was the power of focus. They said, look, Tony, if you're going to be a great racer, you can do everything else right, but you've got to learn how to come out of a spin. And in life, we've got to come out of spins, too. The spin of getting caught up in being addicted to food or being addicted to some habit that doesn't really support us. And they said the key to this process is that when you come into a spin, you've got to immediately focus on what you want, where you want to go, not on the wall. Because whatever you look at, you'll drive into. The metaphor they gave me often was if you're driving down a country road 100 miles an hour, we all hear stories about a guy in his Porsche driving along, and all of a sudden he loses control. There's only one telephone pole within you know, a mile or two. But what does he do? He stares into that pole and drives right into it because that's what he's afraid of. You can't focus on what you don't want. You've got to focus on what you do want. If you do, things will change. So we're going to help you define that. Step two, we're going to help you to begin to get some leverage on yourself.
Leverage means it's not enough to want to change, as we just said, but well, you've got to get to the point where change is an absolute must, not a should. Many people say, well, I should lose weight, I should go on a diet, I should have more energy, I should make these changes. They just should all over themselves. They don't actually make any changes. Should things we feel bad about when we don't follow through. It's those absolute musts that make us follow through. Now, how do we get that to happen? Well, through this program, we're going to show you some ways to get that leverage on yourself where not changing equals massive pain. If you've studied any of my work, you know that my core belief is that all human behavior is shaped by two things, pain and pleasure, our need to avoid pain and our desire to gain pleasure. The problem is, in the past, the idea of like going on a diet or doing something to lose weight had mixed emotions for you. You thought, well, I really want to make the change, but simultaneously, will it really work? Maybe I'll go make the change, I'll give up certain foods, I'll give up certain lifestyle that I really enjoy, and then in the end, I'll just gain the weight back anyway. Why even try? You've got to divorce yourself from that belief system, and you're going to have to make this idea of changing a must, not someday, but today. You've got to make it so compelling that you're driven, that you're no longer willing to settle for a person who's less than what you deserve to be, and where you're compelled to become the kind of person physically, emotionally, and your energy that you've always dreamed of. That's what this program is really about. So we're going to show you ways to get that leverage. Step three, once you've got the leverage, you've got to interrupt your patterns. Some people to the point where they say, Tony, I know i got to lose weight. I know what I really want. i got all kinds of leverage. I must change. But there's a problem. The problem is every time I try, I get caught back up in my old habits. It's so true. Human beings are often the creatures of habit. How do we turn that around? Well, we've got to interrupt our patterns. Those conditioned patterns are going on automatic pilot. A simple example is if I say to you, Winston tastes good like A. Most people respond, cigarette should. And that's been off the air for more than 15 years. See, what you and I have to do is discover where do we overeat? What is it that we do in those situations so that when we all of a sudden find ourselves overeating or not exercising or giving up or whatever that pattern was, we've got to interrupt it. We've got to scramble it so that we automatically try something new. And step four, you've got to find a creative and empowering alternative to your old behavior. What exactly does this mean? Well, how many times have you told yourself, I'm going to quit, I'm going to stop, I'm not going to eat anymore? Well, you've got to eat. <laughs> you can't not eat. That's why it won't last. There's only so long without food. There's got to be a better alternative than that. Or a better alternative than just running and working your guts out until you burn out and don't have enough time to exercise. The key to lasting change is not just to desire the change, not just to make the change a must, not just to get yourself to the point of breaking your old pattern, but you've got to find a way to meet the original emotional needs that got you eating or doing whatever it was you were doing that got you overweight in the first place. See, we've got to meet our needs or the change won't last. If we just take things away, you can forget it. In fact, there was a great deal of research that's been done, done in the last, I guess, 10 years on addictions, and I've studied quite a bit of it. Nancy Mann did a study in 1984 for the International Journal of Addictions, and what she did totally verifies what I'm talking about here. She interviewed people and focused on people over a 10-year period of time who had various addictions, specifically drug addictions especially, and found out what happened when these people were forced to give up their addictions. An example would be somebody who had a drug addiction who was then put in prison. Well, the bottom line is the minute that the legal system wasn't around, the minute this person had an option of change, as soon as the external environment could no longer force them, you can guess they went back to drugs without a doubt, immediately. So the second group of people she studied were people who really wanted to change. They had the desire. They wanted to do it on their own. Nobody was forcing them to do this. The challenge was, on average, a person lasted two years before they backslided. And the challenge, as you might guess, is these people were in a situation where they wanted the change. They were trying to create the pressure from inside, but they didn't have an empowering alternative. The third group she studied were people that found something else to replace what they were doing, whether it was smoking cigarettes that they wanted to change or stop overeating or using drugs. And in every case where people lasted, where they created lasting change, the people found something else to replace the old behavior, whether it be a love of God through some connection that they made through religion, whether it be the passion they put into their work or a new relationship or a new project or idea or concept, something gave them a new drive, something fulfilled that emotional need, and you deserve that, and we're going to help you guide yourself to the point of finding that empowering alternative for you as well. That's how you create the change that's lasting. And I will tell you that even in her study, after eight years, some people backslided. That was an average time. Backsliding doesn't mean it doesn't work. What these people were missing, though, is the fifth step that I want to share with you. And that is they never really conditioned the change so it would last. 
You and I have to remember, so much of us, as we said earlier, is an automatic pilot. So much of our body movements, our breathing, our eating, we don't think about a lot of it. And so what we're going to do is show you how to reinforce these new patterns till they're in your nervous system. We're going to use the science of neuroassociative conditioning to show you how you can have the impact in your body so that you will automatically reach for the kinds of foods that support you. You'll automatically desire the kinds of exercise that will be respectful both of your time and of your emotional desires as well. You'll begin to get addicted to the new feelings and to the new behavior so that they're automatic instead of constantly being in a battle between what you used to do and what you want to do today. That kind of conditioning can work because anything you reinforce enough will remain a conditioned pattern when you're done. And we're going to show you how to make that happen. And finally, the sixth step, we've got to get yourself to test it so you know it works. And the best time to test it is right while we're doing the conditioning. You don't want to wait and check it out a few weeks from now. So we want to put you in environments where you normally would be tempted to eat certain foods or normally tempted not to follow through on the commitments you've made. And you'll be able to show yourself that, hey, I'm doing this automatically now. I don't have to think about it. I don't have to force myself. It's part of who I am. And that is when you'll achieve that experience called the body you deserve because it won't just be something that happens for the short term, but something you'll experience for a lifetime. And I want to warn you in advance, we're going to do some pretty outrageous things to help you break your patterns here. And myself and your co-coach, uh, Dr. Nate Booth, who's helped me to put together this program, we're going to guide you through taking some actions maybe you're not used to. But remember, successful people do what the failures won't. And if you really want to get new results, you've got to be willing to try new things. This program is proven and it works. You've committed the energy and the time and the capital to have this program. You're still watching me, so I know you're committed. So let's make this a set of steps that you take that guide you not only to take control of your body, but maybe your mind, your emotions, and your spirit. Something that takes your life to a new level of quality. Because that's what it's really about. It's not just about your body. It's about living your dream. And finally, I just want to say to you that I hope you'll enjoy the process of doing this program together with us. Because... So many people in life are always trying to make something happen and force it to happen. And I've got to lose this extra pound. Let me weigh myself. How much progress I've made today? Have I succeeded or have I failed? That kind of attitude will get you to link pain to creating change. What you want to do is love change. You want to be like a kid and get curious about yourself. Every day, you're going to learn a little bit more about yourself. Emotionally, not only physically. What makes you tick a little bit? And that information can help you to make your relationships better. That information can help you better at, to be better at your work. It can help you just to enjoy your life more. So get curious, get playful, have some fun with me here. And let's not just make the change. Let's make a quality of life happen for you that you've always desired and deserved. And we're going to talk a lot about deserving because inside, you've got to begin to know that you deserve to have your life at the highest level. You deserve to have the vitality and energy, the physical power that comes with the body you deserve. So turn off this video and let's get started immediately. Listen to audio tape one and I'll look forward to visiting with you there. Till then, remember to live with passion. Welcome to day seven. I'm assuming this is day seven for you and you're not cheating and moving ahead on the videotape here. Seriously, I want to just congratulate you on the progress you've already made. So the purpose of this tape is just to be a very quick morning exercise for your mind. See, how do you develop a good body? You don't go in and do aerobics one time and say, okay, now I'm healthy for life. What you do is you go in and you develop a consistent system so that you're physically vital for the rest of your life and it becomes how you think and how you feel. So what I've designed this little six-minute segment to do is really designed to help you to do a couple of very quick things that can get you started in the morning in the right way, to tune up your mind and your emotions and your body so that you're on track and you're not having a battle with yourself, but rather you're on a roll. So what are those? Well, I'm holding one of them. We're going to teach you a system we call QUISP, Q-S-P, kind of a weird set of words. It stands for Questions, Swish, and Physiology. 
Now, what do these things mean? Well, as we've talked about so far, what human beings do is purely based on the state that they're in at that moment in time and the way they've conditioned themselves to respond to different states. For example, when you're in a frustrated state, you're going to behave differently than if you feel like you're really excited or really happy or really alive or really grateful. When we're feeling really grateful, we don't snap at people. We don't snap at ourselves. We don't reach for a cigarette usually in those moments. We don't go drink something or have something to eat necessarily in those moments unless those are conditioned patterns. So what we want to do is change the way we feel. And one of the most powerful ways to change the way we feel is by changing what we focus upon. You recall we talked about whatever you focus on, you'll feel. If right now you want to feel lousy, it's real easy to do. All you have to do is think of something that once happened in your life that felt bad, remember it again in detail, and you feel lousy all over again. Some people say, I don't have to wait. I feel bad enough today. I don't have to think about my past. Or other people think of things that haven't even happened yet, and they feel bad about it in advance. Not very bright. At the same time, we can feel good just by changing what we focus on. You could think of something that made you feel really good in the past and remember it in enough detail you could feel it again. You could if you really wanted to. Start to notice things that are happening around you right now, things that you're grateful for, things you're happy about, and feel connected to that feeling, and I promise you your behavior will change in those emotional states. Or you could think of things that haven't even happened yet and feel good about it in advance. How do we change our focus? Well, we can do it by trying to force it, by doing affirmations and going, I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy, but that rarely works. The brain goes BS. In order to get ourselves to really change our focus, we've got to change the questions we ask ourselves. One of the most potent discoveries I ever made in my life was that our thinking is controlled by the questions we ask ourselves. Every moment you're alive, consciously or unconsciously, you're constantly asking and answering questions. What should I do? What does this mean? What are they thinking? What am I thinking? What's going on here? Is that true? All these questions are going by so fast we're not even aware of them. The problem is many of us have habitual questions that keep us from succeeding ask and you shall receive, right? So sometimes we ask questions like, how come I always screw myself up? Well, you may not be screwing yourself up, but if you ask a lousy question, you're going to get a lousy answer. If you say, how come I can never lose weight? Your brain is going to come back and say, because you're a pig, right? I mean, you've got to ask a better question to get a better answer in your life. So one of the things that we want to do is start out each morning by asking better questions. When you wake up and you're in the shower, you're shaving, you're asking questions. You might be saying, well, how come I have to get up? Why do I have to do this? Those are lousy questions. How come I get to do this? Or what do I want to make out of this day? Those are better questions. But I developed a series of questions that I want to invite you to use throughout this program, maybe for the rest of your life. Maybe you'll change them. And you're going to see them up on the screen next. First question I always ask is, what am I really happy about in my life right now? Now, you might say, well, nothing. And sometimes my brain says nothing. I'm frustrated. I'm upset. But when your brain says nothing, say, well, then what could I be happy about if I really want to be happy about something? And as you do this, don't just go, well, I'm happy because I'm a lot. You've got to get associated to what it is you're happy about. What I mean by that is really think about it. Follow up what am I happy about with, you know, why does that make me happy? And how does that make me feel? When you get associated to those feelings in your body, you'll light up. In a state of happiness, I can promise you, you're going to behave differently than a state of frustration or anger or overwhelm or depression or whatever other feelings people tend to often find themselves caught up in. This is a good question. Second question, what am I really excited about in my life right now? We all want to be excited and passionate. We don't want to just make it through the day. So each morning, start out with what you're excited about. Load the system. Load your computer with that information, with that feeling. Once you get into a feeling state, by the way, you tend to get on a roll. It's kind of like if you've ever been you know, pulled over on the side of the road or somebody's cut in front of you, let's say, while you're driving on the freeway, and you get all upset, and 10, 15 minutes later, you think it's over, but you're still kind of stirred up. You get to the office, somebody says, how's it going? You go, fine. <laughs> you are still got a little part of that residue of that emotion going, a momentum. We want to create positive momentum in our lives. We want to build those emotional patterns into every day. We want to make them habits. So go through the rest of these questions. They're right there on the card. You'll see them on the screen. And as you answer the questions, get associated feeling. That is step one to your mental aerobic each day. Take this time to answer each of the morning questions. Make sure you answer each question before you go on to the next. Give yourself the gift of emotionally experiencing each answer fully. What am I most happy about in my life now? What about that makes me happy?
How does that make me feel? What am I most excited about in my life now? What about that makes me excited? How does that make me feel? What am I most proud about in my life now? What about that makes me proud? How does that make me feel? What am I most grateful about in my life now? What about that makes me grateful? How does that make me feel? What am I enjoying most in my life right now? What about that do I enjoy? How does that make me feel? What am I committed to in my life right now?